All right, hey guys, Mr. Kyle, Myers Mathematics, and this is the first day in a series on doing all of the Algebra 1 worksheets that uh, CUDA software has to offer just by kind of Googling, like if you look up a certain worksheet or if your teacher gave you a worksheet um, on anything involving infinite Algebra 1 or Algebra 1 or whatever by CUDA software, then that will get covered in this series. And this is the first video in that series, and it's uh, variable and verbal expressions, as you can see here. So let's go ahead and just jump right in. <clears throat> Whenever they say it, to do something, if you do more than what they say, if you do more than what they say to do, uh, you can. It's a little dangerous, though. If I say the difference of 10 and 5, Let's uh, let's see here. So the difference of ten and five, right? It's pretty straightforward. And this is this is like a precursor to algebra, right? So if you are used to some of my other videos on um, geometry or up to even like calc two stuff, then this maybe seem like a little trivial. But this is for algebra one. This is the prep for algebra one. Don't do more than you need to do. You don't need to write five as the answer. Just write what's going on here. So quotient of fourteen and seven. You decreased by so normally if you if you have to turn a math word into subtract then you have to flip the order but only if it says it a certain way if it says decreased by then you actually just write it the same way you would normally you know do just from left to right so half of 14 half of 14 right meaning you divide 14 by 2 so that one is a little bit backwards if it says to take half right or it could mean this one half right half of 14 so that's another way to write it that's a little bit more literal this one would be a little bit more literal half one half of means times and then 14 so either way would be fine x increased by that's plus product of x and 7. You could write x and then dot and then 7 or 7x for this one. I wouldn't write x and 7 with nothing in between them. That's usually not considered right to do. Um, even though everybody would know what you mean, for whatever reason, when you write a letter before a number, you have to put the actual operation that's happening there. So you have to put times. And you don't want to put another x because you already have an x. So I put a little dot for times there. But if you put the number before the letter, it's fine. You don't have to put the, the dot. The sum, okay, so plus 6 squared, baby 2, twice q, 2 times q. Um, or you could put q, uh, q times 2, the way I did it on number 6. The product of 8 and 12, right? I'm just going to put dots. You could put an x for that one since there is no x. Um, so you could say 8 times 12 like that. But since there's x and other problems, it kind of makes more sense to just do the dot. The quotient of 18 and n. So I divide. You can also write 18 divided by n like that with the little division sign. Either one would be fine, actually. n cubed squared is the little baby 2. Cubed is the little baby 3 because a cube is a three-dimensional shape. Write each as a verbal expression. So this would be, you could write half, or you could do x divided by two. You could just say x divided by two here. Um, but I'm gonna say half, because that's easier. Half of x, right? You could say x divided by two. You could say x over two. Um, you, could, you could say a lot of things, 50%. <laughs> Um, a lot of things there. So uh, here I could say the sum, or I could just a, say a plus 9. a plus 9 is a little basic. Maybe maybe add a little flair to it. Say the sum of a and 9. The sum of a and 9. There we go. Now in this one, I could say 9 subtracted into 3. Or I could say 3 subtracted from 
Remember earlier when I said that if you subtract, sometimes you have to switch the order? If I say 3 subtracted from 9, oh sorry, 19, then what I mean is 19 minus 3. If I said 19 subtracted into 3, then I would just write it how I see it there. So be really careful. That's the only one that's like really tricky. The rest of them are fairly straightforward compared to this one. This one I could just say uh, 5 times n, or the product of 5 and n. <clears throat> Something like that. Um, we'll say the product, I guess. The product, meaning times, of 5 and n. And that little symbol there means and. All right. This would be q squared. q squared, it's to the second power, so q squared. 40 divided by 5. Um, I think sometimes you can literally just get away with writing it out, right? 40 divided by 5, or you could say 40 over 5, um, you could say 1 -fifth of 40, you could do a lot of things there. Here, let's say, let's say a over 5, or sorry, a over 8. Um, x increased by is another way to say that. You could say x plus 8, x uh, the sum of x and 8, or here I'm going to just say x increased by 8. So you don't have to get creative, I'm just writing them a couple different ways, because if there's a certain way that really sticks with you, then just do it that way, you know? Um, unless you want to write it a different way every time, but be really careful with that, because you have to word it right, uh, especially with subtraction. If you don't word right on subtraction, then you might have had to have flipped the order. So careful with that. Um, in this, I'll do this time. I'll do subtracted into subtracted into fourteen. This one we could just say two squared, I guess, or I could say uh, two to the power of two. It's almost a tongue twister. 2 to the power of 2. Here I could say 60 fifths, meaning like, you know, dividing by 5. That's another way to say that. You could say 60 over 5, 60 divided by 5, uh, 1 fifth of 60. I don't know, a couple different ways there. Here I could say in times 6. Whoa! Crazy! A lot of different ways you could say these. You don't have to get too fancy with them. Just kind of stick with something that you like. Evaluate each expression. So 5 squared, that's this. 5 squared is 25. 5 times 5. Be careful not to multiply by 2. Remember, if it's a little baby 2, it's not multiply. Right? It's just as much multiplying as multiplying is adding, if that makes sense. So like 2 times 3 is also 2 plus 2 plus 2, because that's what 2 times 3 means. But 2 times 3 is multiplying. Right? You can think of it as adding, but is it? Is it really? It's not. It's like, you know, it's repeated adding. So 5 squared is 25. You can either just remember that, or you can remember that 5 squared means 5 times 5 and then multiply it that way. So anyways, product of 8 and 10. Product means multiply. 8 times 10 is 80. 20 decreased by 17. If it says decreased by, you go in order. So 20 minus 17 is 3. Quotient of 96 and 8. Ooh, I think I forgot that one. Was that 12? 2 times 8? Yeah, I think that's 12. 12 times 8, uh, 2 times 8, 16, yeah, yeah, I almost, I was like, whew, hold on, I don't know my 12s as well as I thought I did, quotient of 96 and 8 is 12, twice 6, twice meaning 2 times, that's 12, 10 less than 17, less than I flip the order, so it'd actually be 17 minus 10, which is 7. Then we have 9 times 5. That's 45. 10 increased by 8. Uh-huh. That's plus. 
All right, 7 squared, again, 7 times 7, that's 49. And the product of 4 and 5, meaning I times, so I get 20. And that is all of the work that you would need to show to get full credit a lot of times. Because these worksheets have the answers included in them, aka the red numbers here, sometimes the teacher wants to see work. Now, really there's not a lot of work to do here, so you could just look up the answers and be fine, but now you know why certain things are the way they are. Okay, so if you, if, even if you looked up the answers and you were confused by some of these answers here, then uh, hopefully that video will have helped you out. And on future videos where they don't just give you the answer, or they give you the answers, but you need, you need to show more work than that to get full credit for your assignment, then those later videos will help out a lot in that area too. So anyways, another little hack here is obviously the worksheet that I look, I'm looking at right now has the answers included in it. So all you need to do is just look up the title of your worksheet to figure out what the answers are. Not so that you can cheat, just so that you can check to make sure you're on the right track, to make sure you're learning, that sort of thing. I really hope your teacher wouldn't turn one of these into a quiz or a test. Um, hopefully they make their own. Uh, but for assignments and homework and stuff like that, you're just learning the topic. You want to be able to work it all out, but you want to be able to check to make sure you're working it out correctly because you don't want to teach yourself the wrong method. So always good to check with the actual answers to make sure you're on the right track there. All right, and that's the first video in a series of videos on Algebra 1 CUDA worksheets. I hope this was helpful for you guys, and I'll see you again in another episode.